Hi there, it's Jing here. This video will help you start preparation ahead of performing the real work. We will try to download and install a bunch of tools, which are needed by this course, such as Docker and IDE. In our case, this would be Microsoft Visual Studio Code. You probably wonder why this specific tool, not any other IDE. I'll tell you later. And as well as the terminal, you can either use the default terminal come together with macOS or download iTerm. It's up to you. By the way, all of the tools mentioned here are free of charge. Here is a list of resources. We will talk about them one by one. First, Docker. Docker has many products, just like Docker Desktop, the complete dev environment, including the most important Docker engine, and Docker Hub, which is a container content library. We don't have to download this one. It's actually not downloadable, but we will consume it later on. Visual Studio Code, the IDE. In fact, a Docker file is merely a text file. We could simply use any text editor. Why do we need this heavy IDE? The reason is because of its powerful and handy extension, the Docker extension. All right, that's all of the resources for the moment. Now let's go to the browser and start downloading. First, let's head to docker.com. And we have to click the green button to continue. Same here. Under the products, you will find Docker Desktop and click Download for Mac. There is a button, please log in to download. All right, so you will need to create your own Docker ID here in order to continue. But for the moment, I will just use my credential here. Don't say password. Here we go. Get Docker, download started. And now let's go to download Visual Studio Code. Fairly easy. Download for Mac and start it. Now let's move back to the Docker homepage. Under the products again, you will see there is a Docker Hub, which we mentioned before, the largest container content library, the most famous public one. Here you will find a lot of different resources, the different images provided by the community, such as Alpine Image, Nginx, Apache HTTP Server, and so on and so forth. Whenever you need any of the image, any resource, just come here. You'll find it here, definitely. Let's go to the Defender. The Visual Studio Code is already downloaded. Let's just drag and drop to the Applications directory to install it. All right. And wait for Docker to be downloaded. Double click to mount the Docker disk image. Verification. Same here. Simply drag and drop to the applications directory. And the copying will take a while. Exactly. Finished. Now let's unmount it. And we don't need, need this Docker disk image anymore. Delete. Great. Takes a moment. Just click open. And the happy face. Welcome to Docker desktop. Grant the permission with my local password. And it's starting. Here, I'd like to give my Docker credentials. Great, it works. It's still being started. Here, the Docker desktop application will be just staying in your menu bar. If I click that, there is a preference. I'll just show you around. Later, you can just try to go and check all different options here. For the moment, I will just simply walk you through Kubernetes and the dangerous um, bomb icon where you can restart the service or uninstall Docker desktop application. Most importantly, let's go to advanced. Here you can adjust different resources you would like to let Docker to consume. Let's say the memory bump it up to three gigabytes. Apply and restart. It takes a while. The little wheel is still working at the top right corner. Okay. We can just go ahead and start um, Visual Studio Code. Yes. So first open the folder. Let's say desktop, open. Desktop is opened. And meanwhile, let's go to the help. 
screen and uh, search for extensions. And here you can see the Docker one from Microsoft. Just click install and it's installed. Great. Close it back to the desktop. Now what we can do here is you can try to press a function key and uh, press F1. There you have your command palette. Just type for Docker and go with the first one. Add Docker files to workspace. Let's just simply select Java and give the port 8080. Continue. Yep, it just created the Docker file for you out of the box. So what are good here? It has a tons of goodies by this Docker extension. I'll show you one by one. First, as you probably figured out here, it has a syntax highlighting. All of the keywords instructions are already being highlighted in a nice color. Secondly, if you try to hover your mouse over that, you will see the API documentations from that. It's pretty handy, right? The hover tips. And one more, let's say that, let's just type the entry point again. You see there is a auto completion. That's great. There's actually one more nice feature. Let's just type something wrong, totally wrong, crazy here. And you will see there will be a warning, unknown instruction. So this is a good part. It has a linked and arrows warnings. All right. So that's it for this video.